All right, so as I mentioned, this is a uh, what you would consider a junkyard motor. Uh, and it's good to see there's nothing uh, alarming in this pan. Uh, if you see here, these are actually marks in the casting. I saw this, I was like, oh boy, what do we got here? But it's actually just bumps in the actual aluminum casting itself. But if you look down here, difficult to see, but there is no metallic. There's a couple air bubbles there on the top, but there's nothing metallic, nothing that would indicate uh, spun bearings or anything like that. So that's really good. So, so far, motor's still looking healthy. And we got this oil pan off. I got a much nicer one going on, so I'll be glad to never see this thing again. All right, so one thing about the new oil pan, um, it's not actually gonna use the factory dipstick hole. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is i got to plug this up because if I were to leave this open, uh, you know, we'd be losing oil, especially on turns. So what I'm going to do is take this tap and I'm going to uh, tap this hole and then just put a bolt in there just to hold it from anything spilling out in the future. So just totally delete that. So let me go ahead and do that now before we get to tearing this block down further. All right, so I'm just gonna put this uh, bolt I had laying around, uh, just tap it into that threaded hole I just made. And I'm gonna use the um, some Permatex thread sealant. This is just liquid stuff. Uh, I much prefer it. We, you know, there's the the typical type you see. <clears throat> that's like the the tape, and that's like hit or miss. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you don't get it wrapped around the threads right. This liquid stuff uh, hasn't let me down, so uh, highly recommend the liquid stuff. I think this one's high temperature too. Yeah, this one's high temp too, which is nice when you're working with car stuff. It's like, why not add the high temp, so. All right, let's get this thing threaded in. Okay, looks good, looks pretty official. All right, so one bolt, you should be able to get the uh, lifters out. Okay, you got the cover, and then they're right down in there. Right, so now I'm just turning the engine over a couple times, uh, and this will bring the lifters, it'll kind of pop them up. So, let's go ahead and get this turned over a couple of times. Got a lot of these lifters popped up. This one's being a little stubborn. All right, so I am putting new um, lifters in there, so I wouldn't um, recommend this, but I'm just using a pair of pliers to pull these out. Um, Come out pretty easy. Now, the one thing that surprised me is this is the updated design. Um, oh, come on. There you go. This is the updated design, uh, the stronger version. I'm really surprised that that's in this engine. I was expecting um, the older design that's a lot weaker. So that's nice that they're in there. But they're getting replaced anyway because I got some new uh, versions of that updated, stronger design. Let me go ahead and get all these pulled out. It's probably going to make a big mess. I'm going to turn this over. Uh, 
Not too bad. It's good having this turn over. It'll uh, let any coolant and remaining oil drain out of it. And you know, as you're cleaning off the head gasket, old head gasket material, little bits and pieces will fall into the coolant jackets and stuff. So turning it over will help just get all those pieces right out as well. pickup tube pulled off we're going to be replacing this with a GTO pickup so we don't need this LQ9 one anymore Thing is pretty gross looking with sludge and all kinds of stuff. I'm no expert, but this neck down here in the factory pickup is a real point that really restrict flow. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of surprised how narrow it gets in that one section. All right, now let's pop off this oil pump. So in order to fit the nice Morosa oil pan, this windage tray uh, doesn't let us fit it. it kind of makes contact. So I just got to get a cutoff wheel and just cut this section out of the windage tray and then the new oil pan should fit. But Chris will get some uh, footage. This is the first time seeing the pistons and everything. With the windage tray off. Nothing looks bad. If anyone knows if these X's are factory, let me know. But yeah, everything looks pretty good. All right, now we're just gonna take the rear cover off. Go ahead, Crystal. Saying a little bit at a time, but. <laughs> you wanna start oh, it over? <laughs> it's fine. All right. There's not many jobs you can do with a hammer on an engine, but. Okay. Oh my god. He's stuck. It's pretty satisfying. Alright. Alright, so we just got the barbell out. Came right out of here. But I did I just put a self tapper in the end of it because it's plastic, it went right in. And just used a pair of pliers. Pulled right out, no big deal. Push this thing in. So lucky. Some guys will get there and they just doesn't go no matter what. This is good. It should just snap in. Oh. Alright. Oh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's awesome. Perfect. Get a little zoom in there, Crystal. Satisfying, looking good. Looking pretty terrific. All right. All right, so just got the rear main cover on. And what I want to say is, I saw a video of someone using this tool. 
So you really need this to put in here and it aligns the cover. So the cover is perfectly on center. Uh, and I'll show you why it matters so much. So there's these two little tabs on the cover here and one over here. And there's no way you could do without the tool. When I tell you how tight these clearances are, let's see. It's literally barely big enough to fit a piece of paper between on both sides. So you definitely need that tool. It comes in handy big time. There's no way you could do it without it. I don't know how anyone would. Just gonna throw this seal on the back, a new rear main seal, and this cover's done.